So using the skeletal model, uh, looking at ankle joint, uh, it's important that we assess the ankle joint in a fairly consistent fashion. It's important to create a lever arm complex on the fourth and fifth. So we're actually assessing the ankle joint in isolation. One of the biggest pitfalls that I see in clinical examination is, is to allow that mid-tarsal joint to unlock. And what we start to see is this composite movement through both this mid-tarsal joint complex and ankle complex. So it's really important to, to specifically look at the joint you're interested in. And as with any joint, there's a reference mark. We look for how much dorsiflexion is available, look for how much plantar flexion is available. And we can also look at that not just in open chain, but we can also look at weight bearing assessment as well. We can even quantify that with a specific test called the lunge test. So we look at ankle joint dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. The uh, segment we're interested in is clearly the side on view of the leg down to foot. And we try to isolate the ankle joint. It's important, as with any joint within the lower limb, that we have a reference position that we work from. Obviously, that's subtalar joint neutral. And what I'm going to do is create a lever arm on the fourth and fifth mets, moving to neutral, and I'm going to dorsiflex the foot up towards the leg. So I'm looking at how much range I can find and what quality of movement I've got in that direction. I'm also going to take the soft tissues out of the equation by going into a bent knee profile. And that takes gastroc off stretch. So I'm looking really at soleus as the restriction in terms of dorsiflexion in this case. Put that back onto gastroc and we can see there's some tissue tightness certainly in gastroc more than into soleus. Beyond the point of that soft tissue restriction so that bouncy end feel we'll get into a bony block which is more ankle capsule. So the restrictive feature here on, on range of movement is very much soft tissue in origin. In regard to plantar flexion, and simply we're just pointing the foot down towards the clinician and finding how much range and quality of movement that we've got. One of the key things to consider when we're looking at ankle joint range is not to allow the foot to go into an everted profile. The more that we unlock the metatarsal joint, we start to see composite movement so we can find a lot more range theoretically through that side on view but the reality is that we're using the mid tarsal joint in combination with the ankle joint to gain that movement that's probably one of the biggest pitfalls that i see in clinical assessment when we're looking at ankle joint function